Hello and welcome. In this video, we will finish off the checkout page and we will implement the dynamic checkout with the data we have here. You know, in the previous video, we learned if we click on the checkout, it is going to send the product uh, ID as well as the product quantity to the Firebase Cloud function. And from there, we are going to do our dynamic checkout. You might ask why you are not sending directly the price, the title from here. As we discussed previously, those are security risks. Like you are not going to rely on the client of having this amount of money so they can manipulate it from the console uh, from developer tool and if they send those data we don't want to check out from there we want to get data from database from the uh, cloud function from the database here and then we will charge the user so we already have the user data in the server the product data like the product id as well as the quantity now is the time to query this product from database based on their id and then charge the user based on this product so let's do that one in this video so i will do it step by step and i will deploy it once so i hope everything works fine this is the code from the previous uh, video when we response the data it will uh, response back the data of our application and the data was uh, looking like this the id as well as the quantity let's say three and it was an object so now i am not going to respond to that i have access to my products I'm going to loop through each product and send and get the one which has the ID the user sent. So we'll use a for each loop here and I will say my products and you know I am in the index.js which is in the functions directory. So I will pass the my product here and for each of them I will give them an item here. So what this is going to do is this is going to loop for every product we have here. So in our checkout we will send two objects with the quantity here. So now based on that, I can read data from my Firebase database. I will open the Firebase database here. Let's see how our, our data will look like. So I will open the products. And this here we have three products. And each product, this is the collection we have. And this is the document, which is the ID of the products here. And this will be our data. So basically, you know, if I come to my code here, Scrolling, scrolling down this is the checkout for the stripe and if we pass this data to the check to the stripe it will charge the user let's say name description amount currency and let's look at our data structure it has description it has image which is extra it has name it has price it has tags so i cannot just get this data from database and put it directly here i have to change it and the structure should look like this especially the quantity and the current and the currency here which we do not have the currency also you don't pass extra information like tags and images so we will manipulate our data so to manipulate our data let's store it like somewhere in an array so i will create a constant called product array here and this is going to be an empty array so now how you are going to read your data from database you will use the cloud uh, admin api like the one we have in the file store function so you can read about the uh, this and uh, documentation also so i will include this one this is called the ad the firebase admin so you can do anything with the admin when you include admin you can add user you can do a lot of stuff which we will we will uh, discuss in the future videos also so i will say call it name and it will require the admin you it should be firebase admin oops it should auto complete it yeah it is firebase admin and we include it once you include this one you can just say admin dot initialize up and this is going to initialize it what is this process of initialization we have already done this one since this code will run in the server we need uh, to have the correct authorization code if i open the source we have already done, done this one in the client side like this is the process of initializing firebase and if you want to initialize firebase admin this is how you do this will take the code from server and this will not work locally that's why i will deploy it once it is there is a workaround locally but it requires a lot of configuration to save your api uh, a google api key in your local machine i'm not going to do that that one so we will focus it on the server side from here you can use the admin which we include at the top and you can use the fire store here and 
using the file store you can call the doc here doc is going to read the document what is our document name it was the products right so i will come back and let's see this is the products and this is the doc the collection name here the collection name is going to be products and it has an id here so if you want to combine the id what you can do is you can use this uh, another uh, sign here this is not comma is not this is not single quote this is uh, the sign which is beside the exclaim like exclamation mark so what you can do is you can have plus here and then you can write your variable name here and I will use item with the zero value what is the zero value as I said our data structure will be like this an object is going to be an ID and the next one is going to be the quantity so the zero will be the product ID that's why I put the product ID here this will come from the client side from the user so I will put that one here it will read only that product for me now now I will just pass the get function to get that information and it will get only the product ID which we pass whatever that will be and let's store this one in a variable here const p which equal to product and now once you have the product just push it to array we have above here you can use the the product array here dot push and you can pass the p that is this much simple and this product will contain all our info this array will uh, contain all those product and those product is not the structure we want so we have to restructure it and i will do it this is fine for now as you may know this will be a promise so now after mm, looping like two times if you have two product this is going to be a promise and you have to resolve it if you don't know about promise there is a series in Laracast uh, youtube channel you can just watch this one like a five or seven video i have already mentioned that if you want to learn about like asynchronous programming with firebase that is the most useful resource i can just mention for you so here what I can do is I can resolve it and maybe store it somewhere else. I can let's say const all equal to new. Oh, you don't have to say new, and it should be promise dot all. What is promise? I cannot explain it in a few words, but I can give you the idea. When you come, when you run your code, it is going to compile your code like it is going to run your code line by line. But when it's read, read here here it will be asynchronously here like it is going to do the work until it is going to do the next line for example if I console.log this array here it will be empty after this one for example if you somewhere console.log the product array this array will be empty because this has not been resolved yet it is still in the process of adding your data that's why you have to resolve it here I will resolve it like this and then I will comment this code I'm not going to console.log it anywhere and now this will resolve it and this will be a promise and when you say promise.all you have to of course provide your array here now it will wait here and now you know asynchronously it will not like wait for you unless you use the keyword await here and whenever you use the await keyword you have to be aware there should be an async uh, keyword also before this one so where is your function it is here we will use the async here as i said if you don't know about asynchronous programming i highly recommend watching that series in uh, firebase i think it is firecast channel in youtube you can watch that one here so what this is going to do is it is going to run our function asynchronously and it will wait here until all your data you have all the data and it will store it in the all variable here now I have all my product and the product will look exactly like this it will be an array of these products or the one which the user want now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one another loop on the all and I will store it in the result so I will create a const array here called results and it is going to be an empty array here so I will pass the the result in my Firebase data here. You know, it, this is going to be array, an array of objects. So instead, I will pass my result. Currently, the result is an empty array. 
so I have to structure my data. The data I just removed from here, my data should be exactly like that. So let me post a little, paste a little snippet here. Uh, this is the data structure we want. So I will comment this out. So our data should be array and it should be object and the data structure should be like this. But currently it is not. It must have the amount, the currency and the quantity. So I will fill the result array with the, the object like this. And I will loop through each of those all we have here. To save some time, I will just do it behind the scene and I will paste the code here. So this is the code we have. What this is going to do is, this is going to loop through all the product, which is this one, all the product the user one. And based on that, I can fill the result here. So what this is going to do, first, I create an object, an empty object here to fill the data inside. I can say data.amount, which create a property of amount, and it should parse my price here. And the price should be a number here. Actually, this should not be parse end, it should be parse float because the price might be 2.5 dollar or something like floating point that's why it should be like that uh oops i have a little error here but i will fix it now also i have to multiply it by 100 because my price are in dollar and stripe always check out with a cent value let's say this one will be 15 dollar so i have to multiply it by 100 to get the cent value and this is the currency currently aud and this should be the the description oops i have written the price here because I just copied the code and down there so this should be the product data description and if you are still confused about how this is going to work you know we loop through each item and the item will contain all of this information it should be that the item dot data dot description this will come from database one and it will store it here and as it is storing this is missing one data which is the quantity the quantity come from the user right so to add the quantity i will i should loop through my product which is an array that come from the user this one which look like this and then based on their id i should add the appropriate quantity for them so this the second loop is going to do that one and then it will push the data in the result array and my array must have all the proper uh, data here and data, data should look like this and that's why I just pass the result here and this is it for here so if I scroll up a little bit maybe just to review if we are not missing anything everything looks fine make sure you don't respond anywhere so th the last response is to have here and it looks fine for now let's come to the I will save this one let's come to the checkout and in the checkout this is going to refer to the local one which is not what we want right so I want to send the the request to the real function which is going to be in the cloud function and this is going to be the URL so I will copy this one and instead of this URL which was in the local one it should send to the cloud function in the server and why I do this one because I as I said you cannot read data locally that's why it should be when the real-time application so I will save it and it will get those data and the last process is going to be this one here so I will copy this code from here which is commented and it's not going to do anything but I can remove it and I will just clean up this one a little bit I will uncomment oops sorry I will uncomment it and I will remove all the extra comments also from here and now it should be what we want except for this one like you can say okay yeah this is also fine I think and I just remove the comments and then the code and you know you have to write the cache blocks or any other console error but I'm not going to do all of those things since it is going to take a lot of time so I will save it this is all we have to do it is going to send the uh, response, sends the request to this URL. It will get it and it will console.log the data also to see what data we have. And then it is going to put it in the checkout. That's all it is going to do. And if I save everything, I will open the console here. This is in my project directory. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run npm run build 
which is going to build my view application and it's uh, the reason is because I have brought some changes in the checkout dot view it should compile down everything and then we will you we will do the firebase deploy also it is done now now let's do the firebase deploy to deploy all our all our application in the firebase and see if everything is working fine so it will take a few seconds it is done now let's try our application and see how this is working and in the checkout page i will refresh everything so everything should look fresh and i will open the console window also to see if we get any error so i hope we don't get any error otherwise i have to deploy everything again and i click on the checkout and let's wait if it is going to work fine or not yes it worked and it sent us to the stripe checkout here and let's see if this is charging the user based on the product we have here yes this is the product name this is the price for each one of them and this is going to be the full price you know the description oh my god this is the description of the product which has all those you know you can strip this with html and i will do that in a future video but for now if you do the checkout using your email everything should look fine and this is on the test mode so i hope it has been informative thank you for watching and i think this is it for this video and i know it took a lot of time to do all of this stuff so that's that's it and i will see you in the next video